Well, happy Sunday, Mount Zion. It's first Sunday, and you know what that means. We are so excited that you have tuned in to today's service. I can't think of another place I would rather be than right here in the presence of God. And for wherever you're watching from, whether it's your first time streaming or whether it's your 40th time, we want you to know that you are welcome. Today is first Sunday, and that means we're doing our communion service. So wherever you are, just make sure you have juice, crackers, whatever you have, and participate as we remember the death, the burial, and the amazing resurrection of Jesus Christ. I do believe that today we're going to experience and encounter the presence of God like never before. Right now, I want you to like and share this broadcast with everybody that you know, because I believe that the word of God that's gonna come forth is is going to touch their lives. Can we pray before we go into this service? Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for this day. We thank you for every person that is tuned in. Father, I pray that you reach the hearts and the minds of your people. Do something unexpected today. Blow our minds. And Father, we'll be careful to give you the praise, all the honor, and all the glory. It is in Jesus' name that we pray. Amen. Like and share. It's time to go into the service right now. The Mount Zion Baptist Church is a word-centered ministry designed to evangelize the lost at any cost, equip and empower the people of God, and provide holistic ministry to our community as well as the world. Seeking to minister to the total person, we are a multi-ethnic, multicultural ministry impacting the world in which we live with the uncompromising message of Jesus Christ. Committed to the spirit of excellence, we are striving to become an oasis of hope within the Nashville community by promoting and providing education, awareness, as well as financial independence. We believe that God must be worshiped in spirit and truth. We embrace freedom in worship because the word says, where the spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. Our foundation is the word of God and we believe it in its entirety. We believe we can do what it says we can do, be who it says we can be and have what it says we can have. Lord, we love you. We glorify your name all over the world, right where you are. Let everything that have breath praise ye the Lord. Come on and lift up your worship. That's it. Right where you are. Lift it up to him. Oh. Oh. Everyone lift your voice so you know. We think about all you've done for us. When I think of the goodness of Jesus and all he's done for me, I can't help but lift up my hands and say, no one. So right where you are, come on, say it with us. Father, we see it all. Yeah. 
not 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 be silent my god god is amazing isn't he wow we are grateful what a powerful powerful move of god there's nothing like the worship of god and we appreciate our team thank you so much madeline and to all of our minstrels who share we thank god for you wherever you're watching around the world right now we want you to know that god has a word for your life I don't care where you're watching from, just know that this stream was ordained by God for you. I want to, as we always do, we open up with prayer and uh, wherever you are, I want you to center yourself now, settle yourself, open up your heart, prepare yourself to get ready to receive what God alone is going to bring in your life. You know what is most important now with all the things that are happening around the world, the global pandemic with heightened racial tension with us understanding that God is clearly saying something and doing something in this season it is so critical that we focus on him and remember that he is still the answer for a broken world so right now father we thank you because you alone are worthy of all the glory and all the praise we give you our worship we give you our praise and today we we pray, God, that you will just touch the lives of your people. Wherever we are watching from around the world, we know, God, that you have the answer. For weighty matters, you are the solution. For those who are weary and exhausted in the battle, encourage them to run on to see what the end is going to be. For those who are up against insurmountable obstacles, let them know that there was a word in this house to bless them today. For those who are preparing to go into surgery this week, be with the doctors and touch and heal. Let all go well. And Father, we turn it all over to you. You said in your word, cast our cares upon you because you care for us. And so now may that grace, that peace, cover our mind and our spirit to give us the peace that passeth all understanding. Let it guard our hearts and our minds. And today we declare something amazing is going to happen in our lives. We give your name the glory. We give your name the praise. In Jesus' name. Somebody say amen. We welcome you. Thank you so much for being a part today to the Mount Zion Virtual Experience. We're so excited to have you sharing on today and wherever you are watching from around the world, whether you're in North America, whether you're in South America, Europe, Africa, our friends down there in South Africa, we love you. Our friends all around the world, listen, we want you to know. I want you to follow me. If this is your first time and you haven't followed us yet, please do that. We want to stay connected. We believe in connection. Follow me and my wife. Follow me at Joseph Walker 3 on Instagram. Follow my wife at Dr. Steph Walker. She's out there on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. Follow me on Twitter, Instagram, and Periscope, and I want you to do it because I'm telling you, we want to stay connected. When you follow us, let us know. Hey, I'm from this place. I'm from this place. It's so important. We just want to be a blessing to you and stay connected, and we're grateful to God. Today, uh, we're going to celebrate Holy Communion. And with all that's going on, the disconnection that's happened uh, since the last time we saw each other, and all that's been happening, we're praying for our brothers and sisters out there on the front lines, man. And you know what? I believe this communion is going to be a little special today. I'm going to do something a little special with it today. So I want to make sure that you're prepared at the end of the message to make sure you have your uh, cracker and juice. And we're going to share it. So I promise you, uh, it's going to be a blessing for your life. 
We want to celebrate, of course. If we were in the physical building, I'd have this person to stand. But because we're in the virtual space, we, we're grateful to God for our, our very own member. She's such a faithful member of our church. Her name is Attorney Keita Haynes. She is a candidate for U.S. Congress, District 5. Um, she's representing Davidson, Dixon, and Cheatham County. And I want to make sure you go out and vote. I want to make sure you, her story is powerful, too. Here's a young lady who had gone to federal prison on something that she really didn't do, but what did that came out of federal prison and literally went to law school and advocated um, for those who had been wrongly and um, dealt with by the criminal justice system. And her story is very powerful. And she's a candidate for U.S. Congress. Our dates for our upcoming state primary election is August the 6th. I want you to make certain you do this. The last day to register the primary vote is July the 7th. And uh, you want to secure your absentee, absentee ballot by July the 30th. So you can register to vote. It's very simple. SOS.TN.gov. And that's if you're in Nashville. If you're around the world somewhere else, I want to make sure you go to your local municipality and vote online. Register to vote. Listen, we thank God and we're protesting and we're believing God. But let me tell you, I believe after protest comes plan. And the plan is first part of that is our civil responsibility and making certain that we vote because it means nothing if we don't show up at the polls. And I think somebody out there knows now more than ever is the time we need to be at the polls. So make certain you do that. Mount Zion, I am, uh, I am excited because uh, we are going to share in a 21-day fast. With all that's happening in the world, God led me, of course, as you heard the message last week, and Joel, and Joel called a solemn assembly. And that's what I'm calling over this house, over our ministry, over those who want to participate who are watching around the world. You see, when there's a lot of chaos happening, and this is like a perfect storm, right? You've got what's happening you know, around the world with the protests. You've got a pandemic going on. You've got all these things happening. And somebody needs to understand that God is saying to us, repent. God is telling this nation, this world, to repent. That the core of all of our crises is repentance. Solemn Assembly focuses us on that, and so it's going to begin on June 10th and conclude on June the 30th. Our prayer targets will be repentance and reflection, reconciliation, restoration, revival. Every single day, you'll be getting prayer targets to your text alert. On our website right now it are the instructions on how to fast. If you've never fasted, after the service today, go to MountZionNashville.org, MTZionNashville.org. The instructions are right there. We are making it simple for you. The fast will include no fried foods, no sweets, and drinking water or natural juices only. So it's not a laborious fast because when you're in a time of warfare like this spiritually, you got to keep your body strong and you know, I want to make sure we didn't want, we didn't want to just go 21 days and you're just not having the nourishment you need in your body uh, because you got to keep your immune system strong in the midst of a pandemic. But I want you to know, every morning at 7 o'clock, starting this Wednesday, and the prayer call will still be on Tuesday, but Wednesday morning at 7 o'clock on Insta my Instagram, Joseph Walker 3, on Instagram Live, on Mount Zion Facebook, and my Periscope, I'll be giving uh, those prayer targets. I'll be speaking a word, and I'll be praying. So for 21 days... We're going to be having like a 21-day prayer call. It's going to be powerful, and I want you to be a part of it. It's only going to last about 7 to 10 minutes, but it's going to be a blessing to get you going as you continue to fast with us. And so I hope you'll do that. We thank God. Hey, listen, I want you to, uh, to check out this shirt I have on. Uh, Mount Zion, man, this is uh, what we're doing, and we want to get it to you. I'm connected, you know, and you are, even where you are now. I'm connected. We want you to wear it with pride. You run to the grocery store or maybe whatever. We also have the Mount Zion mask. How about that? You can do it right now, bookstore.mtzionnashville.org. 
Uh, you can absolutely get it virtually. The combo is just $25. You get a t-shirt 15, the mask for 10. It's real simple. We just want you to be safe, but we want everybody to be unified because let me tell you something. We want the world to know while you're doing your virtual uh, uh, parties and your watch parties, put your connect shirt on. Say, I'm connected. I had mine on this morning in the grocery store. Somebody said, what church is that? I said, Mount Zion. I tell you what, I had my mask on. I don't think they knew who I was, so that was funny, but it was so cool to be able to evangelize and share about what God was doing in our church, and I thank God for it. So, hey, Go and to the website. You can purchase yours at, on our website at MountZionNashville.org. You can go there and uh, go to the bookstore. You can look at that website there and, and go right to the online bookstore. It will come right to you, and uh, we hope, hope you'll do that. Amen. And also, I want to give you updates, a couple things. Uh, our virtual villages, we're excited about that. God is doing great things with our virtual villages, and uh, we hope that you'll be a part of these. Uh, our Christian Education Department is doing a great job. A couples village, singles village, brothers village, sister village. These are huge, man. These are awesome opportunities for you to be a part and engage. These are not classes. They are opportunities for you to have folks to share your experiences with, your testimonies, uh, just to be in a space of community. And these are huge. And, and you find so much encouragement in these villages. So I want you to make certain you do that. It will be a blessing. Now, one of the things we want to make sure you do is get these text alerts every week. Get text alert, text alert, text alert. Please get your text alert. If you don't have text alert, do it right there because that's how you're going to get those uh, prayer targets for 21 days. So make sure you uh, get our text alerts. And also, I want to make sure you're following me. Uh, you're registering for the virtual connects. Now, I'm really excited about that because, we're, man, I'm meeting some amazing people from all around the world who are tuning in from Baton Rouge to D.C., Virginia. People, man, listen, Wednesday or Thursday, find your time. Go to Virtual Connect. Click in. Your pastor wants to see you. Want to just check on you and make sure you're doing well so you can be a part of one of two of those uh, on uh, through the week, Wednesday, 1230 to 1.30 uh, Central Standard Time and uh, 9.30 to 10.30 uh, Eastern Standard, uh, Central Standard Time on Thursday night. So I hope you'll do that. One final thing before we prepare our hearts for worship and giving, uh, we thank God for what he's doing at our Jefferson Street location. You know, our Jefferson Street location was hit by a tornado, and uh, now the uh, construction has begun. Uh, the renovation, uh, our insurance, and all is kicked in. Of course, you see the floors and things. They're getting repaired. Uh, the windows are being uh, drawn up. All the windows are going to be replaced, new stained glass windows, as well as our roof. So we want you to know the next phase is going to be the damaged roof. Um, and then the construction team is preparing to start this roof. They're going to get underway in the next two weeks. And uh, the most complicated job of all of this is the stained glass windows that were blown out. So... Uh, that's going to take a while, but we're hoping somewhere around uh, November uh, that that will be 100% complete. So y'all pray. It's a meticulous process, but you know what? Jefferson Street location is the mother church, and we want uh, to make sure it's done in excellence to the glory of God. So we give him all the glory and praise. So. God is doing good things, and thank God for good insurance. Amen? So we're grateful to God. Listen, we've got to prepare our hearts now to worship God in our giving today. And uh, I want you today, as you prepare uh, to worship God in giving, I want you to know uh, that God is so awesome. When we come together every single week, people of God, what we're saying to God is that, Father, we honor you with the first fruit of our increase. Even though you're home, every time I stand in this massive congregation, man, I have these chills that run in my spirit because I just want to come down there and hug y'all and just love on you. I want to just come right through that screen now. I want to come through and give you the biggest hug ever because your pastor loves you and I miss you. But we're here for you and I want you to know that you give. It's a blessing to God. So I want you to prepare your hearts now. You're tithe. We are a tithing church. We come through this. It's been three months. And Mount Zion, you've been doing. Let's stay faithful, y'all. Let me tell you something. God's going. God's going to bless this ministry. We continue to do what God's telling us to do. This six month, I keep telling y'all, trust God. All that stuff out there will have nothing to do with you when you trust God economically. I promise you. And then, secondly, to give your offering, sow a seed liberally. I encourage everybody watching to give at least twenty dollars. Uh, if you're first time, we encourage you to do that. Many of you give much more than that every week, and I thank you so much. And also, don't forget our vision. Thank you for sowing in the vision offering as well. We appreciate you. 
you can text to give right now. There it is on the screen. Text to give. You can do that. And uh, that's a great way every week you do it. And we appreciate you so much. If you're first time, I make certain you do that. Also, if you'd like to uh, mail in your offering, do that right now. Mount Zion Baptist Church, Attention Finance Department, 7594 Orchid Boulevard, White's Creek, Tennessee, 37189. Make certain you do it right now. Let's pray. Father, thank you for being an awesome God. We bless you and give your name the glory. And thank you for this wonderful opportunity we have to give. We give enthusiastically. Thank you right now, Father. Bless every household, every person watching now. I pray, God, that no lack will ever hit their house. In Jesus' name, amen. Our text to give procedures have been enhanced too. Sending a text to 267 MTZ Seed will send an actual text message of your gift. First, start a new text message, sending it to 267 MTZ Seed. That's 267 689 7333. Then, type your giving keyword along with the amount. For example, to tie $20, type Tithes 20 in the message box. Available giving keywords are Tithes, Offering, Vision, TV Partner, and Other. That's it. Giving is more simple and easy to manage. You can't allow your peace to hang on how someone treats you. Because if you make a personal relationship your peace, you're bound to fail. Some people, you just put too much investment in people. You think that, oh, this person, everything hinges on them. And then what happens when the relationship goes south? you all in crises and man, you should never let somebody else be your peace. No person knows everything that you need. Not one person on the planet. In Numbers chapter 6, verse 24 through 26, the Lord bless you and keep you and the Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Only the Lord. Not, 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 not Kiki, not Eric. <laughs> no, the Lord make his face shine upon you. Stop putting people in a position to do something that God never ordained them to be. Father, we thank you right now for your word, let your word speak to us, let our faith be strengthened, let somebody's life be changed, and we give your name the glory and your name the praise, in Jesus' name, amen. I'm starting a series entitled, Whatever It Takes. There's a lot that's been going on in our world today, and I'm sure you can see behind me. There's a, a pictorial image that captures what's important to this ministry and what should be important to our nation. The black lives do matter. In John chapter 11, verse 17 to 27, I'll just read a few verses of this for you today. So when Jesus came, he found that he had already been in the tomb four days, and now Bethany was near Jerusalem, about two miles away, and many of the Jews had joined the women and around Martha and Mary and comforted them concerning their brother. Then Martha, as soon as she heard that Jesus was coming, went and, and met him, but Mary was sitting in the house. Now Martha said to Jesus, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. But even now I know that whatever you ask of God, God will give you. Jesus said to her, your brother will rise again. Martha said to him, I know that he'll rise again in the resurrection of the last day. Jesus said to her, I am the resurrection and the life. And he who believes in me, though he may die, he shall live. And whoever lives and believes in me shall never die. Do you believe this? She said to him, yes, Lord, I believe that you are the Christ, the Son of God, who has come into 
the world. I want you to think about this today. It's not over. You know, there are moments in all of our lives that indicate that nothing can be done. You ever been there? A moment that every single possible solution had escaped you. Moments that stretch you like you've never been stretched before. We've all been there. The truth is, is that our faith means nothing if it is not juxtaposed to situations that seem impossible. Anybody can have faith when things are predictable. But when you are in situations that you've never experienced and you are encountering challenges that shake you to the core, that's what real faith steps up. This is why it's good to have a relationship with God because what you begin to understand is that whatever it is, God is able. You're watching me today sitting right there and a bunch of complicated things are happening in your life, but I need you to make a declaration at the beginning of this message and I want you to say it and I want everybody who's watching right now to say it, God is able. And when it appears it's over, people of God, you have to remember something. That as long as God is on the throne, there is always possibility. It ain't over until he says so. And so God has a plan for your life. And this word today is on assignment because somebody watching right now has already concluded the benediction should come. I should accept my circumstance the way it is. Things are getting worse and worse and it looks over, it feels over. You've been told in so many words that it's over, but I have come to talk to somebody to tell you it's not over. I don't care what it looks like. Don't you stop trusting God. Don't you stop trusting God because you've got to remember that your God is up to something. And people of God, he directed your path to this stream today because there is a revelation on this word that's going to change your life. You just pay attention. I promise you, God's going to speak to you. Now, the story is a story told by many. You've heard it before, the story of Lazarus. Lazarus is a friend of Jesus. Mary and Martha, they hung out. Jesus is over there in Judea. And Lazarus lives in Bethany and they come hurriedly to tell Jesus that his friend Lazarus, whom he loves, is sick. When messengers come like that, that, that simply meant that he's about to die. What Jesus does is quite interesting. Knowing that Lazarus is sick, Jesus waits Two days. Rather than moving with a sense of urgency and moving at the pace in which others thought he should, Jesus pauses, continues doing what he's doing. They come back and they tell him, Jesus, Lazarus has died. Jesus says to his disciples, our friend Lazarus is now asleep. They say to him, well, if he's sleeping, he's all right. Jesus realizes they have not caught the revelation yet about sleep and salvation. So Jesus says, I tell you what, he's dead. Let's go now over into Bethany that we might awake him from his sleep or from the dead for the glory of God. One of the things that Jesus says at the onset of this text, I want you to really get because I think this is going to bless you, particularly in light of all that's going on. Jesus says, the sickness that Lazarus has is not unto death. I believe it's important and critical for us to understand on the backdrop of what's happening in our country, what's happening around this world. It is a global sickness. It is a sickness not only in terms of a medical pandemic, but it is a sickness in the hearts of men that causes them to cause division and to extract so much hatred among other men. But I need you to hear this today. This sickness will not be unto death. That God is still going to work in the midst of it. That I know you may be tired of dealing with this over and over again, but guess what? It's not over. We learn lessons from Jesus in moments like this, and one of the first lessons I want you to learn is 
how he manages the moment. First thing that he shows us is that in the midst of an acute crisis, watch this, in the lives of Mary and Martha, he demonstrates how to walk out a solution in the midst of a problem. What he does not do is allow other people's emergencies to become his. What you'll discover about Jesus is that he can show up late and still be early. <laughs> how we manage these moments speaks to our confidence or lack thereof in the power of God to resolve the issues that we're dealing with. Some of us are so emotional and episodic that the moment we get bad news, we just run, we don't think through it, but you must pause and pray and have a very calculated response to a crisis. And what Jesus really is saying, you don't have to accept things as they are. You see, people of God, I, I want to drop this on you because the fact that he shows up is an indication that he's not accepted the report that it is final. Jesus says, let's go that we might raise him from the dead. I am not going to accept the fact that this is final. Though Lazarus was sick and Lazarus did die, Jesus teaches us there's always possibility in the midst of what looks permanent. For some of you right now, it looks like it's just permanent and that's it, but guess what? There was always hope in what appears to be hopelessness. I'm talking to somebody right now who needs to understand you don't have to accept things the way they are. You don't have to succumb to the reality that this will be the end of you or the end of your situation. Listen to me. You got to do what Jesus did. You got to learn what he's trying to get Mary and Martha to do is to shift from their frustration to faith. You see, when Jesus gets there, remember, He's two days late. They'd have had the funeral and everything. <laughs> but what's interesting, he gets there, Mary and Martha are frustrated. If you had been here. And often our frustrations cause us to lose sight of what's in front of us. Don't ever let your frustration cause you to lose sight of the possibilities that are right in front of you. They requested Jesus to show up and he comes late. Their brother has died and they declared that it would not have happened had you been here, Jesus. You have to own this thing, right? Because there is a sense of empathy we have to have with, 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 with Martha questioning and petitioning God with our current fears and frustrations and angers and sadness. I mean, we have to manage our own frustrations because both Mary and Martha are frustrated, right, with Jesus' timing. Have you ever been frustrated with Jesus' timing? Let's just go and call it for what it is. He waits two days. And Martha and Mary say, if you had been here, this would not have died. He would not have died. She's angry. See, this is a part of the grief process because when Martha sees Jesus coming down the road, she runs to confront him and she's visibly, visibly angry like so many of you. Too many of our brothers, too many of the brothers who look like me are being senselessly killed. Jesus, if you had been here, some of us are angry because we don't know what to do with our anger. We're frustrated and, and, and we're watching things and we're upset. And I want you to know something. There's nothing wrong with you being upset. There's nothing wrong with righteous indignation. But you must understand something. Bargaining sometimes is a part of this grief process. If only you had been here. You see, this is interesting because this if thing is really a lack of understanding and awareness of who Jesus is. If you had been here, wait a minute, the last time I checked, he's everywhere at the same time. We often think that just because he may not have moved when we wanted him to move, that he wasn't there. But I need you to understand some people of God, listen, you can't live your life in a whole bunch of ifs. If I had done this, if this had happened, if I had married this person, if I had gone this way, if I had done that, you will torment yourself living on ifs. But I need you to understand something, in the midst of your frustration, you got to still lay hold of your faith. Because people of God at various times throughout the movement, we've all felt that God wasn't there and we needed God. But I need you to understand something. Although they were in a difficult place emotionally, like some of us are emotionally frustrated, please hear this, in verse 23, Jesus says these words, your brother shall woo, rise again. I know 
it looks like it's over, but your brother shall rise again. I know you're watching me now and you're frustrated and you're angry, but I come to tell you, your situation shall rise again. Your marriage shall rise again. Your money shall rise again. Our community shall rise again. Your city shall rise again. I've come to tell you, people of God, as long as God is on the throne, we shall rise again. See, that's why you have to have an understanding of the ministry of the master. Because what the text says to us, I think it's important, is that when you know who Jesus is, you have understanding of the capacity of what he's able to do. So the reason why we doubt what he's able to do because we don't often know who he is. It's interesting because after the revelation that Jesus says your brother shall rise again, in verse 24, he references the great resurrection. I mean, in a real sense, Jesus says now, you know, Martha says, I know he's going to rise again. We know that, Jesus. In, in the great resurrection, we know. We already heard about that. We know that in the great resurrection, he's going to come back. Jesus says, y'all don't understand something. It's about to happen now. I'm not talking about in the great resurrection. I'm telling you, your brother is about to get up now. Can I just speak this over somebody's life? There are some things you're thinking that's going to happen years from now, but God told me to speak it over your life. It's about to happen now. I wish you just could walk around your house in every room today and just say now. I wish you could just release that word into your family, over your children. Just say now. There are some things that God is about to do, and he's going to do it right now. I need you not to focus on the problem, but focus on the answer. Jesus has to help them understand who he is. You see, and often we want things done, but we have to come to grips with who Jesus really is. In verse 25, Jesus says, I am the resurrection and I am the life, right? He that believes in me, though he were dead, yet shall he live. And whoever, whosoever lives and believes in me shall never die. Do you believe this? See, you have to shift your focus from the problem to the answer. Do you know Jesus says, I am the resurrection. When you understand what's at, what, at the core of that revelation, it'll bless your life. Listen to this. The first time Jesus revealed his I am-ness was in a context when his people were in oppression. Let that sink in for a moment. When Pharaoh was oppressing the Israelite people and Moses was instructed to go down and tell Pharaoh to let God's people go. Moses was to speak to power and authority and by speaking to power and authority, Moses recognized that I don't have enough authority in my own to go down to Pharaoh and tell him that who should I tell them sent me and God said, you tell them that I am that I am. While we are speaking to power, while we are protesting, rightfully so, while we are making moves trying to get people to understand what's happening in the world, people of God, let's remember something. It's in moments like this that the kingdom has to rise up and show the world the great I am. You see, because ultimately, what the Lord is saying. We often tell the Lord what he is, and then the Lord counters what I am. Lord, but it is this. He says, but I am. But Lord, it's getting tough, but I am. But Lord, it's, it's looking like it's not going to happen. He says, I am. Because whatever you're dealing with, you've got to remember his I amness. People of God, can't nobody else just say I am. See, I am is a declaration of his deity. Can't nobody just show up in your life and say, I am. A declaration of his deity saying that I'm the only wise God. I am, ain't nobody like me. I am the same yesterday, today, and forever. I am the resurrection. I am the way, the truth, and the life. I am the true vine. I am the light of the world. 
it's also a statement of his sovereignty. It means that God can show up and do whatever he wants to do and God doesn't owe anybody an explanation as to why he does it. And when he does it, he moves in such a way that always benefits his children because often their revelation of what he does doesn't catch up with them until years later. There's some things that God did. <clears throat> There's some things that God did in your life that didn't catch up with you until months or years later. It's an announcement of his abundance that I am shows up and says, whatever you need is wrapped up in I am. Woo, who gonna pay the bill? I am. Who gonna heal my body? I am. Who's gonna make sense out of this crazy world? I am. If we can ever turn the attention away from the problem in the earth and start focusing now on I am, I guarantee you, people of God, that's what the breakthrough is. And let me show you something. When you do that, you do whatever he tells you to do. See, once you come into the revelation, this is going to bless you, of the power of his ministry, you're able to activate your faith beyond the situation. Jesus says, show me where you lay him. Woo. This may seem crazy, but you got to be obedient. You got to be obedient. Your breakthrough is going to be tied to you doing what Jesus says do. His sister says, but Jesus, he's been dead for four days. You know, the Hebrew understanding of death is after four days decomposition sets in. There is no possibility of hope. There's no possibility of things ever getting up. Have you ever had a situation that looked like logistically, physically, emotionally, there was no possibility that this thing was going to happen? And Jesus says, I know what it looks like, but show me where it is. Ooh, I'm looking for your faith. And see, Jesus, is, Jesus, show, Jesus shows us something. Lazarus' own sister calls him stinky. But Jesus, he stinks. He's been there for four days. And people will label you and say it's over for you. People will call you stinky. <laughs> people will call you thug, thug. <laughs> people will call you all kind of names because they have no situational awareness about your potential. They don't understand that once people label you dead, the next thing they do is they roll stones over you. They put Lazarus in a tomb. Take me to the tomb. Take me where you put him. Because once I name you, I must now roll a stone over you. And this is where it gets interesting because it's the method to the madness. I want you to get it here, people of God, because when Jesus begins to move in your life, I mean, that always makes sense on the front end, but I promise you it'll make sense on the back end. Let me tell you something. You got to move something to free something up. In verse 39, you know what Jesus says? Listen, roll the stone away. <laughs> Martha says, but Jesus, he's been dead. He stinks. He's been there for four days. Nobody asks you that. Roll the stone away. See, if you could ever understand this, let me break it down. You see, the stone is the symbol of alienation and separation where I create an institutional identification for the place of the naming. See, once I name you stinky and once I name you dead, then I must now create a stone. And the stone becomes a symbol of separation and alienation that says who's valuable on this side and who is valueless on that side. Who's stinky on that side and who's, who smells good on this side. And who has potential on this side and who doesn't. And the reason why people are out in the street marching and the reason why people are angry because that's what culture has done. Culture often creates stones. And what we do is that we put these separations between people that we feel are valuable and people that we feel are valueless and we don't necessarily roll stones over them now. We run railroad tracks down the middle of their communities and we run interstates over them and we remind them they're always born on the wrong side of the track. But the devil is a liar. We aren't the stinky ones. We aren't the ones that, that, that God has given up on. We are God's people, all of us. And Jesus says, I'm going to show you that there is potential resident even in those you have buried and declared dead. Even those who have categorized and said there is no life, show me where you lay him. And Jesus says, roll that stone away. You're going to get a breakthrough in your life. You've got to learn the power of rolling stones away. Ooh, watch this. See, rolling a stone away means I'm willing to do something the world says should not and could not be done. Some of you, you got mental stones in your life. You got spiritual stones in your life. You got all kinds of stones in your life. But your breakthrough is in your obedience 
to roll stones away. People of God, you want to be freed up from some people, from some places, <laughs> roll some stones away. You want, you want to be financially independent, roll the stone of debt away. You want things to happen in your community, then roll the stone of apathy away and get in line and vote. You want to you wanna see breakthroughs come in your life? Roll stones away. Because guess what? Dead situations are no match for a living word. My God, in verse 43, Jesus, when they rolled the stone away, now I need you to get this. Please hear this. Jesus doesn't speak until the stone is rolled away. Jesus doesn't speak until the stone is rolled away. Let me talk to you. When you do what you can do, he'll do what you cannot do. You waiting on the Lord to move, he waiting on you to roll that stone away. And once you roll that stone away, Jesus looks in that tomb, he doesn't go in the tomb, he looks in that tomb, and Jesus with specificity calls Lazarus by his name. Lazarus, come forth. You who are dead, come forth. Because Jesus understands the power of a living word. If you could ever understand the power of a living word, this word I preach is not some historical document, some antiquated writ. It is a living word organically moving in your life. The power of life and death is in your tongue. And when you understand the power of that living word, the word of God is no match for a, a dead situation, rather, is no match for a living word. When you can declare, over your situation, people of God, live. I'm speaking it right now that a living word is coming into everything that's dead in your life saying, get up. Can I talk to somebody now? Because I'm talking to everything that's dead now telling it to get up, get up, get up, get up. And listen to me. Let me show you the manifestation of your miracle. I'm getting better to close. But the final thing the text shares is how the miracle manifests. It ain't over. It's not over. Because as long as Jesus is on the scene, <laughs> the Bible says that while Jesus was calling Lazarus by his name, while Jesus was calling Lazarus by his name, please understand this. In verse 44, the Bible says, in verse 44, and he who had died came out bound hand and foot with grave clothes. His face was wrapped with a cloth and Jesus said to them, loose it and let it go. <sighs> Listen to me. The word can get you up, but you got to come out. The word can resurrect you. And you can be resurrected from the dead. God can give you a word Listen to me. And that word can quicken your situation, reignite every dream in your life, reignite every passion, reignite your vision. But you're still in the tombs. You got to get up. You got to come out. Lazarus had been wrapped up, mummified by other people who placed him in the tomb. The people who placed him in the tomb roll the stone away. Watch this. Lazarus in the tomb cannot make excuses for what he's been wrapped up in. He must come out of the tomb because when you get a word from God, you got to come out the best way you can. Doggone it, I'm talking to somebody right now. I know you may not have had the support system that other folks might have had. You might not have had the financial support that you needed. You might be in a situation right now where you can't rub two nickels together and you wrapped up in all kind of crazy situations. But if you want it bad enough, my God, it's time for you to hop out of that tomb crawl out of that tomb, roll out of that tomb. Whatever you got to do, I come to tell somebody today, come out of that dead space. And when he came out, whoo, Jesus looks at the people 
because this is what I want you to understand and I believe this is the essence of what we're seeing in this system. This is why all of this matters to me. This is why it matters to the diverse group of people that are making it happen now. If you pay particular attention to what has happened to Lazarus, watch what happens. Nobody, watch this now, watch this. Everybody rather, the people who put Lazarus in the tomb were told to roll the stone away. You did it, roll it away. You put him in grave clothes. So now you loose him and let him go. Systems that put you in tombs have a responsibility to roll the stone away. And systems that wrapped up people for years and generations have a responsibility to loose and let go. But I have a word from God for somebody today who's watching right now because I need you to understand this is your season to be loosed. I need somebody to just shout that over your life. This is my season to be loosed because everything that's been tied up, stuffed for generations, God is about to loose it now. That's why you're seeing the turmoil in the earth now because there's some stuff that's about to be loose now that God is about to rearrange and reorder and God's about to reposition some things that the last are going to be first because God is about to loose. This is your season to be loosed. Child of God, God is about to free up some things that have been tied up in your life. This was never a Lazarus demise. It was always for the glory of God. All of what we see happening around us is ultimately going to be for the glory of God because can't nobody do it but him. When Jesus gets on the scene in your life, that's when situations happen. Let me tell you something. I thank God for the protests that's so necessary. Let's keep on fighting. Let's keep on bringing awareness. But protests have to move to plans. You got to have a plan. And you can't have a plan without his presence. <laughs> Watch it. There is a problem. My brother is sick. There is a protest. Jesus, do something. <laughs> there is a plan. He shows up. Show me where you're laying. Roll the stone away. Lazarus, come forth. Loosen. And it all happens because he's present. We can't get this done, people of God, without his presence. It won't be done by politicians. It'll be done by his presence. Today, I want you to have an opportunity to get to know him. His name is Jesus. He's the best thing that could ever happen to you. And right now, I want you to know that he loves you so much. <sighs> run, run to him. That's safety in him, run to him people of God this month trust the man of God run to him he loves you so much there is safety in him come get to know him he loves you so much and he has a plan for your life if you want a church home it doesn't matter where you are we love to you connect so many hundreds of you have connected to our ministry since this pandemic from all around the world. Mount Zion's my church home now and we love it and we can't wait to continue to connect with you. Been praying about a church home. We'd love to be that church for you. This is all you gotta do. Listen, salvation at MT Zion Nashville. Salvation, mtzionnashville.org. Right now, 
I want you to send me an email right now. Do it right now. Do it. Do it right now. Right now. Do it right now. I promise you. We're going to follow up with you. We want you to make that decision. I believe right now you're doing it. I believe somebody right now with tears in your eyes, you're doing it now. Do it now. I guarantee you, God has a plan for your life. I want you to take a moment now and tell you this communion is going to be a little different. <sighs> All that's happening in the world today. What Jesus died for What he shed his blood for is that we might be one. It doesn't matter what color we are. The reason you see people now, the diverse group of people out in the street, white and black and Asian, Hispanic, because he died, the blood might make us all one. People of God, that's what the cross did. And for your family today, I want you to see your family. Think about if you're by, by watching me right now by yourself and you're sitting there, maybe you're with your family now sitting around the table or on the couch or whatever. I want you to think not only about your physical family, but think about your spiritual family. Think about this Mount Zion church. I'm connected. Think about your brothers and sisters in the community. Think about that God is about to show us what family really looks like. And maybe this entire reset is showing us what family ought to look like. So it was on that night after supper, the night the Lord Jesus Christ, he took bread and he blessed it and break it, he gave it to his disciples and he said, this is my body, which was broken for you. <laughs> take it in remembrance of me. Take all of it now. On that cross, Jesus said something that I want you to remember. How to channel your anger and your frustration. Father, forgive them. They really don't know what they're doing. People that hurt you had no idea about the destiny, the greatness that was on your life. They had no idea of the kings and queens and the blood that ran through your vein. But they will know. And today, you take this cup he took it and said, this is the cup of the New Testament shed for the remission of my sins. Take it, drink it as often as you do in remembrance of me, he says. Drink all of it now. Now, thank you. <laughs> Mount Zion, love you so much. Those of you have been watching for the first time, we love you so much. Make sure you connect with us. Make sure you share this. Share it on Facebook. This word needs to meet everybody you know. Share it. Don't forget if you want to get one of these cool t-shirts, make sure you get it. I want you to get it. And also, more importantly, I want you to make sure. 21 days, starting this Wednesday, we're going to be on a 21-day fast. And I want you to know this is a solemn assembly, and we're going to be doing it together. God knows I love you. If you have more information, go to our website for all the announcements, all the things I've shared, mountzionnashville.org. And I want to make sure you stay connected to me. Make sure you do. Let me know you've been watching today. josephwalker3.org. Let me know. Let me know it bless you. I thank God for you. May the grace of God cover you. May he keep you. May he make his face shine upon you. And may you remember he's moving in whatever it takes. In Jesus' name, amen.